God key is so strong that it can't even Goku be sensed. Goku learned Super Saiyan 4 after learning God 4, so it has Super to be Saiyan stronger. Super Saiyan God is a God. You don't get stronger than Shenlong a God. Shenlong was stronger than Super Saiyan 4, but he was completely terrified by me. Shut up! Shut up! Shut the fuck up! Ugh. God damn it. I don't want to do that. Uh, fine. F okay, so it's been brought to my attention that a shit ton of people have been debating, really just arguing, over which is stronger, Super Saiyan 4 or Super Saiyan God. First off, let me just get something out of the way right, real quick with these stories. These stories are very simple, shallow, and had no business being story arcs. They were... These two storylines were made to be movies. As the name implies, well, no, I will not be taking a knife to any of the characters from the series, but, as it might also imply, I will be putting the entire series under extreme scrutiny for review and analysis. I love Dragon Ball. I love all of it. But that doesn't mean there aren't elements deserving of criticism, and I won't be pulling any punches. So if you like your Dragon Ball reviews to be completely glowing and devoid of negative comments, tread cautiously. There's a particular shot of Goku approaching Karin that I never stopped to notice before. I realized the background was just so rich and detailed, and there are so many panels like that. And it's just so sad when you think about how infamous Dragon Ball is for its constant use of repetitive, barren wastelands, as opposed to the rich topography that Toriyama is clearly able to depict. I like that the story keeps giving obstacles to Goku, but I don't like that it relies on the Dragon Radar not working three times. We're not saying that Dragon Ball Super is not canon, like, hear us out first, uh, but in terms of how Dragon Ball Super is being written, it's slightly different than what you guys might think. So at this point, you probably you guys you, you guys probably realize that the manga and the anime appear slightly different. And that's because the manga is an adaptation done by Toriyama, while uh, the anime is done more by Toriyama and his team. Well, it turns out it's actually been slightly produced a little bit differently, I think. And Toriyama is involved, but not as involved as you guys think. Like he's not sitting there drawing up by himself and writing a story word for word. He is doing a lot of it, but he's not doing a word for word. And I did it! I actually did it! I actually, I can't, I can't, I can't believe I've done this! I, I did it! It's in the video! It's in the proof! It, look, look! I did it! I got the beers that I wanted! Oh, ooh, girl! <sighs> I don't call myself a Dragon Ball Z fan, and I haven't really considered myself a Dragon Ball Z fan in years. And I know that's going to be shocking to people, uh, considering it's from me. Hello there, beautiful friends from around the world. I'm your host, Black and Fist, and throughout the time I've been on here, people have asked me, Black and Fist, why do you always say Dragon Ball? Why do you not say Dragon Ball Z? Why do you always refer to the series as Dragon Ball? Hello there, beautiful friends from around the world. I'm going to be your host, Black and Fist, and I am bringing you a very special interview from Falconer Productions Music with the one and only Bruce Falconer. Thanks to the misinformers and clickbaiters that I love so dearly, many people have been led to believe that this character is Beerus's fifth fighter, Monaka's secret transformation. But that is not the case. So who is Ozato? Find out on this quickie. Hey, right off the hop, the manga version of Goku vs. Frost is significantly better than the anime. In fact, Almost every fight, with the exception of maybe Goku and Beerus, has been better in the manga than in the anime. The way that Toyotaro draws this fight, the way that he draws the characters are on model, the way he does the key spheres and the aura around them, and the way he choreographs his fight, it boggles my mind that Toei has been unable to replicate Toriyama's style, and Toyotaro has been able to do it with ease. I mean Now, considering Akira Toriyama's unpredictability, I feel like Goku's ultimate form come the very end of Dragon Ball Super 
will actually be his base form. Now I know that's not what you guys wanted to hear and to be honest I didn't really want to say this either but the way it's going I can definitely see Whis training Goku to harness his base form because I feel like Toriyama is big on conserving energy. Let's just say Whis teaches Goku how to use his Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan abilities within his base form without even having to transform. I definitely feel like Akira Toriyama could go down that road. And I have a few reasons for saying this. Goku's base form is iconic. Everyone sees Goku in his base form and they automatically know who that is. Also, no one would expect Goku's ultimate form to actually be his base form and I feel like Toriyama could use that to his advantage. Now, but what if Captain Ginyu switches bodies with a Metamarese fusion? For everyone out there that doesn't know what the Metamarese fusion is, the Metamarese fusion is the Gotenks, Gogeta, finger type fusion. Pretty much the fusion that has a time limit. But, what would happen when the fusion eventually runs out? Would Ginyu have control over the two beings that originally fused? And I honestly don't know, that's the entire point of this video. Guys, did you see the last episode of Dragon Ball Super? Did you guys see the last episode of Dragon Ball Super? I'm gonna let you guys uh, finish getting married and stuff, but did you guys see the last episode of Dragon Ball Super? Last episode of Dragon Ball Super? Have you seen the last episode of Dragon Ball Super? Dragon Ball Super! Did you see the last episode? The last episode of Dragon Ball Super. It was really good. You should check it out sometime. Goku went ham. Oh my god, Gohan looks like such a bitch. <laughs> Looking like that, I could probably beat him. Are you sure about that? I'm tired of it. You're tired of what? All the videos. All the mean comments, I'm tired of it! Whoa, 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 man, I made videos defending you. I'm tired of people always making fun of my outfit. Uh, duh, no one likes a tracksuit. Do you? <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's cozy. Huh, well maybe you're a bitch after all. Don't underestimate me. Well, you shouldn't underestimate me. You see, I'm not just your average guy. I'm the legendary Brown Saiyan of Universe 13. But you can just call me Dion. There's only 12 universes, idiot. Hey, shut the fuck up, man! He was an old man in the beginning of Dragon Ball. And he was even old throughout Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, and even Dragon Ball GT. So this begs the question, is Master Roshi immortal? Well, to answer your question, alrighty guys, it is Qua Man here today, and I'm bringing you my first episode of Dragon Ball Theory, as I will discuss whether or not we should accept or reject the theory that Master Roshi is immortal. So I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna use heavy profanity, guys. This is just Trying to... Fuck you, Frost! Fuck you, Dragon Ball Super! And fuck you, Duct Tape, for teasing me because I know your ass will after this fucking video! Gather warm cloths for my balls. You play me a kingly tune. <laughs> Who the fuck is this shirtless, in shape, tall, well groomed, damn near flawless piece of shit? He's my son. Why do I get the feeling he hates Kakarot just as much as I? What's your name, boy? His name is Bro. Let him answer. My daddy called me with Ziff, brother. The fuck? Daddy said I gotta stay calm for I fuck everything up.
So I stay out in the motherfucker. You're high? I'm so high, baby. The best part about this, I get to kill both Ginyu and Kakarot at the same time! Wait, who's Kakarot? You're Kakarot. I thought his name was Goku. His name is Goku! No, it's Kakarot! But he just said Goku! Yeah, I did! I know what he said, buddy! So what is it? Kakarot or Goku? It's Kakarot! Kakarot. No, no, no! Just... Look, his Saiyan name is Kakarot, but he changed it when he landed on Earth as a baby! So they kept calling him by his Earth name, and I am calling him by his real name! So does that make me Ginyu? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I helped you guys out. So most importantly over everything else, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember as I always say, to have a great day guys. And remember, as this guy says, to never give up. A few of you who stick around to this point in the video where I look at you and we have a sentimental moment. You see I was about to close the video, I changed my mind. Instead, I'm gonna look at you. I'm just gonna talk, just real quick, just a little moment that I feel like we just had. Look me in the eyes. How do you feel when you look me in the eyes? Tell me, tell me what you feel. Say it out loud. Say it out loud right now. All right. Now look to your left and right. Make sure nobody's looking at you because they'll think you're weird. If you're a guy, I hope you already clicked off, but actually I don't. We can have a moment too, bromance. Alright, it's getting weird. Uh, that was going nowhere, so I'll just end the video. Why are you